There's something quite rewarding about doing your own bike maintenance, and not only that, but it can save you an absolute fortune. If you're new to this area, then the huge variety of tools and equipment can be pretty mind boggling. So we've put together our six must haves that we think everyone would benefit from having in their locker. Whether you're a commuter, weekend warrior, or seasoned cyclist, a fully functioning bike is key to an enjoyable ride. Yes, you might need to learn some new mechanical skills, but with the help of YouTube, that's never been easier. On the vast majority of jobs, you're also going to need some Allen keys, hence why they're the first pick. If you've got a garage or shed where your tools will be stored, then these bigger T-handle type Allen keys will be ideal. They give a very secure and comfortable grip of the tool and the extra length on the larger sizes makes stubborn pedal or crank axles less of a mission. Conversely, if you want a set that you can pop in a kit bag, bike box or car, then a complete set like these will keep them all in the same place and still have more leverage and comfort than most multi-tools. Four and five millimeter sizes are the most common and we recommend getting a set that go down to at least two millimeters. This set, for example, range from 1.5 to 10 millimeters and have a ball end on most of the tools for hard to reach places. You'll be using these a lot, so we highly advise getting a good quality set. Most of the things that need tightening on your bike work with Allen keys, so you don't want to start rounding off bolts because they're worn. Next up, we've got something that many people will already have, but are so important that we just could not include them. Unless you're gifted with extremely robust thumbs or have properly loose tires, a good set of tire levers will be needed for every tire change and puncture. With more and more tubeless offerings on the scene, tires seem to be getting harder to put on and take off. And a lot of the time, it just comes down to luck of the draw with your tire to wheel combo. You really don't want to be snapping a tire lever as a scraped set of knuckles is sure to just make you even more frustrated with the situation. You know, funnily enough, I can speak from experience on that one. Tire levers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can get metal ones which are more robust, but should be used with caution to prevent damaging wheels and plastic ones like these, really, they're the best. Most have a hook or similar to hold the tire off the rim with the spokes and they often come in pairs. So inexpensive and we think it's worth getting a few sets so that they're always on hand. Now, personally, I've got one set that I keep for riding with, that's in my saddlebag, another stationed in my toolbox, and then I've got another set in my event bag, which pretty much lives in my car. Basically, I just want to avoid using the spoon ever again. Unless you're lucky enough to own a bike with electronic shifting, then keeping the inner and outer gear cables fresh is the best way to keep your bike changing gear the way it should. Recabling a bike may seem daunting at first, but after a few goes of learning your bike's quirks and the routing, then it should be possible to do without too much faff. Now, a heavy duty set of cutters like these are capable of cutting through both gear inner and outer, as well as brake cables and hoses too. A decent pair will have a sharp cutting blade to make sure that the cuts are clean and that the hoses aren't compressed during cutting. You really want to avoid that. They sometimes have a few extra features too, such as a pointy tool for opening up the hole in the hose, or these ones have a crimping function uh, right in the middle here for cable end caps. Now a torque wrench might seem like an expensive purchase, but when you consider the consequences of doing up the bolts, the wrong tightness, then it becomes a very worthwhile investment. Bolts too loose and you run the risk of them coming undone too tight and there's the danger of causing a serious bit of damage to your bike and as a result to yourself. Over tighten a seat clamp for example and you could ruin a carbon fibre frame. Torque wrenches come in three main styles, beam type, simple click style torque wrenches with a single torque setting and click style torque wrenches like this one with a range of settings and a ratchet head. The price can depend on a lot of things. Some come with digital displays and a beep when you reach the desired torque. And of course, the size makes a difference as well. Small ones suitable for up to about 10 Newton meters will enable accurate tightening of bolts such as stem bolts, seat post clamps, and saddle clamps. 
Meanwhile, larger ones will allow you to use them for cassette lock rings and pedals. We say to get one with a range of about two to 10 newton meters first, as this will cover the vast majority of bolts on your bike. Now, we've sort of cheated with the next one and included two tools. The vast majority of chains now use a quick link and these can be a bit of a pest to get apart without the right tool. Now, I spent years bodging it with shoelaces and a set of needle nose pliers. That would always slip and at the crucial moment, so I'd wish that I'd spent a few quid on a set of master link pliers earlier. A set like this are the perfect shape to pull the rotors together and allow a quick link to be removed with minimal effort. Changing your chain regularly will help you prevent premature wear of other far more expensive components and also allows you to give it a deep clean in the interim. After removing your chain, it's time to replace it. Then you'll also be needing a chain breaker to get the length just so. Chain breakers can often be found on multi-tools and although these are fine for getting by in an emergency, you'll find a more robust specialist tool such as this one to be far more comfortable and easier to use. I can attest because the little ones kill your hands. Leading on from that, if you also need to change your cassette, whether that be because it's worn out, because you've got a new wheel set, or if you simply fancy a gearing change, then you'll also need a cassette tool. Now, to hold the cassette steady rather than it just freewheeling, a chain whip like this one is used to grip the cassette and stop it spinning. Then the cassette tool is like this, the cassette tool itself can often be purchased separately, which is a much more cost-effective way if you already own a compatible wrench, or of course, if you want to fit to the torque wrench. The cassette tool is often used to uh, undo disc brake rotor lock rings as well, and you'll find that some have a central guide pin, though it's not necessarily needed. Now, most chain whips are designed to be used on a variety of different speed chains. We've got one that fits 11 tooth cogs on this side, 12 tooth cogs on that side, so it'll work pretty much across all cassette. Because the forces are quite high, you wanna choose one with a rubberized handle that you can get a good grip of. And this one even has a really long length, so you can get great leverage. So that concludes our six or so workshop essentials. Armed with these, we reckon you can successfully complete a whole heap of home mechanicking to save yourself a bob or two in the process. If you found this content useful, then remember to like and subscribe. If you've got a favorite tool that we've missed, then drop it in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next one.